Okay, back at it. Um, I made the hole in the firewall, as you can see. Started out with a three quarter, and then I took the die grinder and turned it into a rectangle, which fits the plug. No problem. Let's see if I can get it for you here. See, plugs in. So I can get it in the cab, so that's good enough. Now we need to lighten the harness up a little bit because there's just too much crap on here I don't need. So the first thing I took off is this big bundle of wire. It's, I think it's a 22 foot wire, they said, that goes to the rear for the trailer plug. If we're going to wire it that way, we're not. Geez, I guess I should just throw the rest of it on the floor as well. It'd be easier. Okay, what's all this spaghetti? This is a Jeep Wrangler, 2004. So we definitely don't need this long white wire. Oh, this long with a loop is for GM trucks only. Um, what that does is it sends power whenever you press a function on the controller, be it up, down, excuse me, up, right, or left. When the solenoid engages, it also sends power out this white wire, which tells the GM truck to not turn on the alternators. There's a relay involved. There's a service bulletin for it on the I believe 16, 17, and possibly 18. Um, they should have got it together. It was really um, with a dual 200 amp alternator only, but I've heard of it with, with just about all GMs. So then these other two wires that are equal length, we have a, we have a red and a white. Um, I believe red is the high beam, white is the low beam. You're supposed to connect that to the vehicle high and low beams. And what it does is it doesn't allow the plow lights to come on if the vehicle lights are on. Um, I just cut them off, and I tell the customer to turn the headlights in the vehicle down to parking lights and just run the plow lights. Um, there's really no benefit to running both, but to each his own. So I'm going to cut all that extra spaghetti off. Um, for some reason, they gave us a real long wire on the inline fuse, um, which is kind of useless because most vehicles you have to run the wire all the way back out under the hood to the fuse box to pick up key on power. Uh, many new vehicles don't even have a fuse box in the vehicle anymore. So, or there's a designated location where you're supposed to pick up power from that's not in the cab or, or where that wire is not long enough to reach. So we're going to trim that all up and then figure out how we're going to run this harness. Next, rather than get in here and, and play around looking for the, the marker and turn signal, normally on these TJs I would just remove this you know, front one and make my splices in back of it and then put it back in and then my splices would be in the wheel well. Now granted I use heat shrink tubing and loom and clamps and all, loom clamps and all that but nevertheless it's still there. And then I would have to come around the other side, I'd have to run my harness across somehow to the other side and, and do the same here, you know, work behind the light or, you know, pick up the wire in a different location. Now I know the wiring for the passenger side comes from the driver's side. And after just fishing around a little bit with my fingers, I realized that all the wires are in this loom running along the inside of the driver fender. So I went online real quick, found my colors. Left turn is gray, right turn is tan. Park is white with a yellow stripe. I'm gonna open up this loom, find the wires and make my splices here where it's easy. And I'll be able to also mount the relays, re, yeah, relays that are part of the 23061 harness and the fuse as well. And I think I'll have an easier time down in this area being able to mount it rather than trying to mount it behind the grill because there, there's no space behind the grill whatsoever. So that's about where we're at now. Okay, so apparently it's the uh, black with the yellow stripes. That's the... Uh, parking lights. I just checked a different schematic. Apparently the TJ, I don't know, the wire colors change over the years. I know it does for the reverse lights because I've ran into that before, but um, it also mentioned that headlight switch, so it may have been white with a yellow stripe at the headlight switch, but here's our gray, here's our tan, and here's our black with a yellow stripe. So here's my three connections for the parking and turn signals, and uh, that's really all I have to hook up under the hood. 
I have to pick up the reverse signal in the cab um, on the driver's side rocker panel where the wire runs along the inside there. And uh, we'll get to that later. But right now I need to make all my connections for the marker and turn signals. And I'm going to need to run a wire to the battery uh, for power to uh, provide power to the relays. So here we go.